bom dia a todas e todos. É, hoje a gente tem um seminário do departamento como parte da programação do workshop da pós-graduação. So we should switch to English. We have the pleasure to receive uh, Carlos Ordonez, and I will invite uh, Ron to, to make the introduction. Carlos, thanks a lot for waking up early and uh, accepting the invitation to, to give this talk to us. Thanks a lot. Thank so, you. So, Ron, please. A anytime. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, it was really uh, a nice surprise when, uh, I don't know, a few months back, uh, maybe it's, it's getting to be six or eight months, uh, Carlos and I, we know each other from our days uh, in the PhD program in physics at the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, and so he's an old friend and we have uh, a number of shared interests besides uh, physics, such as uh, music. And uh, so anyway, it was, it was uh, a very nice surprise when we uh, managed to get back in touch and Naturally, I uh, said, well, how about giving us uh, a seminar? And, and Carlos uh, graciously uh, agreed. So uh, as I understand, uh, back in the day, you worked with uh, Steve Weinberg, uh, sadly uh, passed yeah. on recently, but, but was uh, one of the great uh, figures of, of physics in, in our time, uh, just like uh, Michael Fisher, who uh, died, I think, over the weekend. Uh, anyway, uh, his core area, uh, Carlos Odonius, is uh, quantum field theory and uh, gravitation and particle physics, all of these. So he's, a, let's say, a, a Journal of Physics D person as far as I know, uh, but he may wander into uh, A, B, C, and uh, E yes. from time to time. Uh, so he's currently uh, a professor at the University of Houston. I, I guess you've been there uh, for a good while. He's been right. working on uh, things such as conformal quantum mechanics, black hole thermodynamics, possible connections with string theory. And uh, I noticed uh, some very interesting uh, awards. Uh, he's, he's a fellow of the American Physical Society and uh, has received a number of other awards. The John Wheatley Award also from APS and uh, shortlist finalist for BBVA Award in 2010. But what intrigues me the most, I have to say, is that uh, he received a medal from uh, Pope John Paul in representation of the World Federation of Scientists for work on planetary emergencies. I don't know if you're going to get into this in your <laughs> seminar, but uh, anyway, uh, okay. interesting. So uh, congratulations for all that. And uh, please, uh, th thank you for accepting. Uh, well, uh, thank you, uh, Ron. That's a very kind introduction. You've been very generous. Uh, and I would love to, I'll definitely tell you more about the, this is of course Zikiki, right? He's the one who made us do this. And because of uh, my association with the World Lab, and I actually brought the, the first postdocs that I brought here from the World Lab were from Brazil. So I'll tell you more about that later. Yeah, that was, and that's, you know, when you try to do some things and then eventually you get either punished or uh, re re rewarded. So I guess it, we were rewarded in this sense. Uh, so, well, thanks again to all of you for the kind invitation. Uh, I'm going to share screens now. Okay. Let's see. Does this work? Oh. Hmm. Hope it's working. Okay. Do you see the talk now? Yes. Excellent. So, uh, as Ron was saying, uh, this is uh, kind of my natural habitat, although in the last 10 plus years, 
I've also extended my uh, my scope to to uh, Cole Adams, uh, uh, you know, partly because of the closeness of of the Rice folks, uh, but uh, but always within the point of view of quantum field theory and normals, et cetera. But I'm actually uh, get, you know becoming fairly active, and I had uh, have had some uh, grants uh, to support those things. But I'm always uh, navigating between uh, that aspect of physics and, and these other things related to, to gravity and, and quantum field theory. Uh, so I'll, I'll t tell you today about the recent work that I've done with, uh, with my group here in Houston and, and with uh, my colleague, longtime colleague, uh, initially from NYU, by the way, uh, Horacio Comblon, who is now in San Francisco, University of San Francisco. And then recently also very excitingly with uh, my uh, colleagues at Texas A&M, uh, Dr. Marlon Scully and, he, and his group there. Marlon is, is, is uh, I suppose some of you know, he's, he's one of the world leaders in quantum optics uh, and uh, an all around fantastic physicist. So this has been a very interesting uh, uh, collaboration and, and I, you know, we hope to, to be going forward. So I'll, I'll, what I'm going to do is, uh, and these are the collaborators at the bottom, right? You know, I, my, my you know, senior collaborators, Arash is a postdoc, and Abhiji Chakraborty is, is my graduate student, a uh, very bright graduate student that I have here. So uh, this is the outline of the talk. Uh, I always have to give motivations because uh, without motivation, you know, I, I certainly cannot work. So motivation, history, uh, I'll talk about the brick wall mo model by et Hof, uh, and, uh, and then uh, our approach here with Horacio about that model and, and, and put the context and all that. Then if, uh, later I'll, I'll introduce the uh, breakthrough work by Scully uh, and Fooling. This is Steve Fooling, uh, a professor at Texas a &M, and others, uh, which is really the basis for, for, for our work. Uh, uh, I, I, I know I've known uh, Marlon for a long time, and I visited a and uh, just before uh, the, the pandemic uh, and uh, about other things. And then suddenly he told me about his recent uh, work on, in black holes in, in black holes and entropy and so forth. So I got interested and, and I told him, I think we, we can do some of those things with, within our approach. And, and that's the origin of this collaboration. Uh, and then, then, then they'll describe the, the, the work in detail, uh, and then you know, including, including the, the important case of Kerr, and I'll tell you how this you know, happened later. Uh, and and finally, I'll, I'll I'll probably just have a few minutes to, unfortunately, that's all the time I'll have to describe uh, the interesting aspects of entropy here that. Uh, uh, and other things that are related to to uh, Beckin, Beckinson um, Hawking entropy. Okay, um, so now so a little bit again, again motivation and history. So we all know that Hawking uh, gave us uh, his famous results in, in the mid seventies, right? About uh, black holes uh, uh, actually radiating, right? And they they emit thermal radiation and. Uh, he, he, he found his famous uh, Hawking temperature and, and applied the usual thermodynamical uh, rules to find that, the, that these black holes actually have an entropy and that the entropy is proportional to the area of the horizon uh, with the famous factor of one fourth and all that. Now, this, this has started a whole, um, you know, the, the, this is just a program, if you wish, an uh, activity in, in this field that has uh, been continuing for, for decades to try to understand what this is about and particular, well, everything, but in particular the micros, microscopic aspects, right? Because, you know, there's supposed to be some underlying degrees of freedom that produce this result. But, uh, but uh, uh, Hawking didn't do that. He, he was just clever enough to, to first find the fact that, the, that there's sort of thermal radiation and, and the temperature, and then he used the usual thermodynamics uh, rules to find this, but but he did not give a microscopic origin. The other, the, the one thing that's really surprised, one of the many things is that, uh, you know, entropy usually is, it goes as the volume of the system, but here it goes as the volume of the surface only of the of the system. So that's a, that was a new feature. This is a so-called holography, right? Uh, 
And so again, you know, all of these things have been used, uh, have been studied over the dec subsequent decades. Uh, in 1984, Gerard Ethoff, Nobel laureate, a, gave a model a, in which he, you know, was trying to understand the microstates, and he he just had a, uh, and I'll describe it shortly, uh, a thermal atmosphere and. Uh, surrounding the black hole and computed the entropy. And he found a low area similar to this for, for such system, but with an infinite uh, divergent uh, coefficient, not the nice one fourth. I'll say what you know, this is about shortly. Uh, then later on, uh, Strominger actually found the first for the, you know, he, he had, he derived for the first time from first principles using uh, string theory, this, exact formula with the factor of one fourth and all uh, for black for extreme black holes. This was very exciting and in a sense some sort of validation of string theory if you wish. Uh, um, there's the loop, uh, the quantum gravity also derivation, but as far as I know, this one is the tighter, tightest one. Uh, and uh, and uh, now of course it's for extreme not and we are interested in non-extreme black holes, but, it, but in any case that was a breakthrough. And then in 2005, Horacio and I uh, used uh, a near horizon and conformal quantum mechanics inspired ideas to, to derive a tough result. All right, so again, we gave it a, a different um, uh, you know, framework and, and which we have been exploring since. And then in 2018, Scully et al., they developed this model that I'll tell you about, which is the basis of our work. And then this is, that's why we're doing these things. Good. These are the publications. Uh, the, the two most recent ones, the ones at the top, are uh, uh, the ones that have to do mostly with with uh, with uh, with the thermal and uh, microscopic aspects of sort of quantum quantum optics aspects of these things. Uh, and uh, it was such a long thing that I proposed. Let's divide it up into two. And uh, the idea was accepted. It, not just long, but also for pedagogical reasons, and and also the editors that accepted that, so they weren't they were published back to back, and 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 I'll just have to make, you know tell you about it. But but these are very comprehensive, and and they also include material from the first two papers at the bottom. So I'm going to emphasize the the work in the first two papers in 2020 and 2021, the ones the ones at the bottom, okay, and then just tell you a few, uh, sort of summary of this and because uh, otherwise it would have been too much. It's already too much. All right, so, so the setup of the sort of physical setup that, that Marlon and, and, and company created, uh, by the way, the way I see this, this whole thing is, is uh, this is a kind of Gedanken experiment, right? You know, uh, uh, although, although he, he actually had other motivations, he, he was thinking in terms of what they can actually do in the lab, right? So, but, uh, but uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't have thought of this. So what they have is a, they have, um, first they, they consider one atom, right? Uh, that has, it's a two state system. And the uh, atom, uh, and it, 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 it's falling in, in a free, in, a, in an inertia, in a geodesics into a black hole, right? Okay. And, uh, and this is a this is a, a cavity that uh, they uh, set up here as a sort of QED type cavity, partly because it, it, in their work they're only going to deal with one mode. I'll show you that later. So they can do that. They can do one mode. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they they can select one mode in the electromagnetic expansion using these cavities, and also because with this cavity they 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 you know they they want to mimic the uh, boulder vacuum conditions that are used here. And I'll, I'll explain that a little later. Uh, but, but, in, but in the end, they actually had to in, inject many, 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 many of these guys in order to, to find any sort of thermal behavior, right? You, you, you don't have a thermal thing just with one uh, atom. So, so they are injecting many, many, many of these guys. And then these atoms, as they fall, uh, start emitting uh, and absorbing uh, the, the, the photons, the sort of the quanta created by, by the vacuum set up here. All right, so this is the picture, and sometimes they emit, and and sometimes they absorb, etc. So, so then a gas of of photons or, or this, this quanta is created, and but also uh, there's a gas of atoms created as well. So and and the atoms keep going. So the the the, the photons uh, go out to, to infinity, but the but the atoms uh, 
you know, fall into the black hole, right? And, and, and I'll explain a little bit more. So this is the idea here. Uh, and, then, and then they studied the, the radiation and the probability amplitudes, et cetera, and they found some very interesting results. And I'll tell you about that later. But, but the history of this, from my point of view, starts with a tough paper. So in 1985, he considered a, a, a free gas you know, of scalars to make it as specific, but it doesn't really matter the spin. And, and, and surrounding a black hole, this, this is the horizon, right? okay? And, uh, and uh, he's going to compute the entropy of this gas, right? I mean, this is the idea here. So if he considered a Schwarzschild black hole, you know, defined like this here, and, um, and uh, you know, you, you know your, your thermodynamic rules, he calculated this entropy. He, 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 he had to consider, so I guess, I don't remember exactly the logic, but if, uh, you have to say something about the boundary conditions here. And, uh, the, and, and the, what he chose was reflecting boundary conditions. It's a direct like boundary condition, right? So, so the field modes are non-zero outside, but they're zero inside here. So that's, uh, and that's kind of a way for, for him to mimic a black hole. But also you'll see that there are some infinities uh, appearing near the horizon. So you're, you have to also include uh, either some direct left boundary condition very close to the horizon or, or, or some cutoff, which is what he eventually did. But uh, so I'm just describing his calculation. So, so you do the usual, uh, usual, usual, usual formulas from, the, from statistical mechanics. And this is field theory, of course. And, and, and he found that the entropy indeed is proportional to the area, right? Uh, uh, with a coefficient that uh, diverges, right? And so he had to introduce a, a cutoff, a small distance cutoff, A, and this all happens at a certain temperature T, right? Okay, so, all right, this is the area, right? So, and and this, this power here is actually a bit uh, sloppy because you have to work in, in, in invariant, in terms of the invariant quantities is actually, I think, square. But the point is that it diverges, right? And it's a small distance from the cup, but you make it fine, right? But it's, it's looking pretty, you know, it's looking like, like Hawkins, at least the holography aspect is there, right? So what do you do with this infinity? That, that's an issue. Well, let's just put the cutoff, right? See what happens for now. Then, then he realized two things. So this is at some temperature T, and this is some cutoff. Hey, he realized that either, I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of summarizing this, and there's just deeper arguments for these things, but, but you certainly, you, when you find the exact, you know, the exact functionality of these, that if T is Hawking's temperature, this guy here, right, which is you know, from Hawking, the mem is the mass of the black hole, and if A is of the order of the Planck length, then you can always choose this coefficient here to be one-fourth. Or, or the other, you know, the order it's a, you know, of one fourth. So uh, that, that's suggestive that uh, the fact that this is Planck length, right? It, it's, it, this cut of has to do something with, with quantum gravity. So, so, you know, this is an interesting, and so this doesn't completely tell you that this is the Hawking Bekenstein uh, uh, entropy, but, but it, it is very suggestive that, that there's some interesting uh, interplay between, between the quantum aspects of the fields and quantum gravity at some level. So, so this created a lot of excitement and you know, started all kinds of things after that, good. So let's see, uh, how do you do this? Ah, let's see, nah, okay. So then, uh, then uh, 20 years later, Horacio and I have been working as, as Ron said, uh, with qu uh, conformal quantum mechanics for several years and we knew very well that near, near the horizon of, 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 of a non-extremal black hole like this one, uh, you, you get a, 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 quantum, a CQM, conformal quantum mechanics type of uh, 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 behavior. So, so we wanted to, and, and we had done some preliminary calculations and, and suspected that, uh, that that was where everything, you know, in, in a tough calculation, he just computed an integral from zero to infinity. He didn't divide it up into near horizon or anything, right? But, but we wanted to know because these things are supposed to be happening near the horizon, right? This is also sort of the, the lore. And, and, and so, so we decided to, to, to first look at, a, a, you know, do a, a near horizon expansion and see what happens, but also motivated by the fact that the, the near the horizon, we know that uh, there's a sort of CQM uh, emerging and, and there's a symmetry related to this. So it's always good to know, you know, 
what happens when there are symmetries emerging in the problem and so forth, and, and possible relationship with string theory and all that. So we, we had all these ideas, you know, 20 years later in mind. So, so when that, we went ahead and, and did this problem, first of all, we generalized it to D dimensions, not just four, and also to, to, to a wider class of black holes, okay? That, that uh, for which you define a, a, a horizon and, and you can even have more than one. And so uh, it, this includes Reisner Nordstrom, Nordstrom, for instance, and, and even the stations with cosmology. So we're, we're trying to do the problem in a more general fashion, okay? We, we did that. And of course, we, we you know, it, it always has, have to satisfy, this field has to satisfy the Clang Gordon equation in this uh, black hole background, right? This is, this is the way you always do that. This is the way that, that he also did it to begin with. And so you, you make an expansion of the field in harmonics, et cetera, et cetera, and all of that. And you are led eventually to a radial equation, a radial Schrodinger type equation, right? So uh, with, with, with an effective uh, potential that depends on, oh, and, and of course, this is the, the omega is the, the frequency, right? Associated with, with each mode and so forth. So, so this, this, this potential here, it depends on the frequency, on, on, on the mass, on the angular momentum, eigenvalues, and d-dimensions, and of course, the radio. Okay, good. So this is an exact result, nothing, you know, at this point, we would, wouldn't be doing any different, anything different from, from a tough. But what we did was, let's look at this equation very close to the horizon. Let's expand around the uh, Schwarzschild radius, right? So x is, is very small. And something very interesting happens because, uh, I need a parenthesis here, this, this effective but the potential becomes this guy here near the horizon and, and plus order, you know, x to the zero as uh, what you are very small. So the leading order is a one over x squared uh, potential, which is typical of the quant CQM type potential, inverse course potentials. So the dominant potential here near the horizon is a CQM type potential. Um, and, uh, and so for many purposes, that's, that's almost all we need to, to consider. Uh, uh, we, it's actually a little uh, trickier because even though this is one over X for large L for, you know, when, when L squared essentially is of order um, one over X and that can happen because you know, X is small and for large, you know, th then this goes as one over X squared. So they're comparable. So you have to, but well, essentially is that the one over X squared thing is the dominant thing, right? Uh, or oh, uh, this parameter is, is this, this thing here, <clears throat> kappa is the surface gravity. So when we do, so, so this is it. The dominant term is, is this conformal quantum mechanics type potential, which exhibits this, this, this symmetry SO21 or SLR2R, uh, right? And, 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 and uh, so, so, you know, we, we did that. But, and then we, so we use this approximation now and look at the formulas for, uh, when you compute the when you compute the, the the entropy, you know you have to find the the density of states, et cetera. You know you just follow the recipe, which I'm not uh, repeating here, but that's very standard. We use WKB, et cetera, et cetera, and we found that the, just the CQM contribution by itself, just that piece near the horizon, accounts for the divergence that Eto found. All right. So and and it turns out that it's actually when you look at his integral from zero to infinity, it's a very complicated integral, right? I mean, if, if, if you're a tough, you know how to do it quickly, but if you're me or the typical person, it, it's, you know, have to struggle a little bit. But when you do this expansion, it's actually pretty simple, right? And so if you know that all you have to do is, is expand around the, um, the, the, the horizon because that's where things are gonna come from and it's easier technically, at, at least you, know, you do it, right? That's, and, and so we, we got the same results, of course, we, we got that if, if it diverges and, and, and if the temperature is hawking and the cutoff is of the order of Planck length, then we get essentially the Beck and so, so, you know, we go, so the purpose was not to just reproduce this, but to, to find these insights. Uh, first, technically, as I was saying, it, it, it's actually fairly easy to, once you kind of realize where the dominant terms are coming from, uh, to, to do the calculation. And that's actually extremely important throughout. And I cannot emphasize this enough, especially for students, but also for professionals. It allowed us to generalize Schwarzschild dimensions to the, 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 the dimensional metrics and all that. It, it, you know, we, it, 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 it's all incorporated in, in these F, in, in F prime of uh, is kappa, in which so, so, 
So th that's, that's, you know, if you want to do this problem with directly and exactly for arbitrary Schwarzschild d-dimensional metrics, good luck. And, and, and then it reveals deep connections with conformal quantum uh, symmetry, right? So that was, that was good. Now, they, then came uh, the famous work by, by Scully et al. in 2018, uh, and in which they consider what I, I kind of, the picture I gave you before, but this is actually from their own papers. So they, they have uh, these, these, these atom, and eventually they're going to pump, uh, inject many atoms here, right? But, but, but let's say it's just one, one atom, and it, it, it's, 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 it's following a geodesic, a radial geodesic, which they chose to be radial because, you know, it, we, we be more general than that. Uh, they chose it to, to start very, very far away at infinity and, and, and at rest. So they chose some, some kind uh, uh, initial, boundary, initial conditions and, and, and it's just the radial directions so that the mathematics was simple, right? And so, and they put this mirror here uh, this is sort of part of the cavity thing that they have, right? So uh, the point about this mirror is that they're going to create or recreate uh, here and, and they have a cavity, a large cavity, right? So they, they, could, they basically want to produce a vacuum, the Bolwer vacuum for, uh, associated with this black hole uh, in Schwarzschild. They did it also just Schwarzschild and in four dimensions, right? Okay. And, and they need to, uh, put this mirror, uh, again, this is sort of optics con con construction, uh, to, to, to implement a Dirichlet boundary condition, sort of similar to the Toff boundary condition, right? But also, uh, uh, they don't want, they don't want uh, uh, Hawking radiation to escape. Uh, this is sort of the way they put it. So, so they, you know, this prevents Hawking radiation from escaping. So the only radiation that the per somebody at infinity will measure is the one in this problem, okay? Not to be confused. So this is their sort of, Gedanken kind of experiment. Uh, for us, we just need to, to think of, of it as in terms of, of sort of a tough uh, you know, boundary conditions, and that's all we need. Uh, so regardless, we are, we're choosing a, a Bolwer state uh, here to do the calculation. The Bolwer state, as I'm sure many of you know, is problematic because as, as, uh, some of the, some of the uh, quantities diverge here, and it has to do with that divergence that, that I introduced earlier, all right? So people don't think of it in, in physical terms. In that state, there's no Hawking radiation. One can prove that. So that's actually nice mathematically for us. We, we also want that, right? But uh, because we only want this radiation to detect, to be detected at infinity. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, we, don't, we don't, you know, we just imagine that there's an implicit cutoff and, you know, making these, these things finite. And as we'll see in the calculation, it, it doesn't, it, it, we don't see those problems, right? So, so, you know, for us, it's okay to, to start to have this bulwark, um, bulwark vacuum uh, because, you know, people don't like it, don't like it, but it, it, it's sort of the, the nice one for this problem. All right. So, so the question that they addressed was, what is the probability of the ad atomic detector to click, right? This is, this is what you do in these pieces of UNRU radiation, et cetera, et cetera. You, you, you have the, uh, the atomic system, the two-state system interacting with, with the vacuum of the embedding system, embedding space-time, and, and, and you like to see if there's any, any particles being emitted or absorbed, et cetera, et cetera, right? As, as it goes down, because there's some notion of acceleration in, in this business, right? So, so that's, the, 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 that's the calculation that you want to do in this setup. By the way, UNRU is also part of the, UNRU, I, I don't know if it was part of that 2018 paper, but eventually, you know, he, Marlon was, was uh, criticized by GR type people, but eventually he convinced many of them, including UNRU. UNRU is actually at Texas A&M now working with Scully. So, so I guess there's something to this picture. Uh, now the, the, the mathematics of this is very standard now. You, you, uh, you consider the Hamiltonian for the system to be, uh, so you have uh, some sort of uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic field, uh, you know, something for us, the electromagnetic field, the model is really going to be uh, a scalar field. Uh, they actually, so I'm going to now talk about their calculation. They act, act, have a massless field, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's convenient and it's, uh, we, and, and we don't need it to be massless. And this is one of our generalizations, but in any case, uh, this is the, the Hamiltonian, this is the free part. This is the, the, the two state part, right? Of the atom 
uh, detector, and this is the, the this is the, the, the gas, the, the free you know the free uh, ENM or you know scalar, uh, and, and it's massless. There's no ma no mass, right? So uh, so we uh, we use the same, uh, and, and this is the interaction between the the this is the standard also. This is monopole interaction between. Uh, between the electromagnetic field, scalar field, and the at atomic system. Uh, these A's are the A's and A daggers of, of, of the quantum field right here. And these sigmas are the lower in and, and uh, uh, racing operators for the two state system. This is a, these are coupling constants. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so, so uh, they, of, they call this the dipole. Interaction, right? And the, the, the GR people know this as the monopole, right? Because it's, it's 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 really like a single, you know, sort of point kind of thing. But the reason they call it that is because they, they in quantum optics in in a cavity they can produce these by using the, the the dipole approximation in the problem. So you know everybody is actually right about it. But but it's the same thing that everybody calculates when it, when you calculate probabilities of detection in in this business. Okay. Now, so there are four terms here, four types of interactions, uh, and the ones that are of interest to us are, well, yeah, the atom can absorb, a, B, B is the ground state, A is the excited state of the two-state system, and uh, this is sort of a typical normal process, a, a quantum is absorbed, and, and it, the two-state system goes up, but the, the, the one that's a little less common, but it's, it's, it's the, that's the way it is, if you you look at the original, you know, you, any, any calculation that does UNRU radiation, this is important. So it, it, there's an emission process also, but here, it, it, this is somewhat counterintuitive, it goes from the ground state to the excited state, right? Emitting, that, that's, that's, that's sort of unusual. There, there's no problem with conservation of energy because there is an external ac acceleration business here going on. But uh, they, so this is, you know, if you have any issues with this, go to, uh, Davis, uh, Burrell and Davis, uh, and check out the chapter on detectors, and that's all explained there. But but this is a, a bit, you know, especially for students, if they haven't seen this, uh, the explanation is very clear there. So so we're going to be looking at these two processes, in particular the emission process to begin with. Okay, and then so so uh, yeah, this is the third process that they they did the calculation. Uh, you do perturbation theory. You assume that the coupling constant is small, and, and this is this is this is uh, you know what you calculate in this business. This is a probability. Then then the transition between uh, the initial. Uh, so 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 do you have the vacuum right? The vacuum for the part for the quantum field state right? Uh, and and there's and and the the ground state of the of the uh, of the atom are going into producing one. This is the 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 one uh, quantum right? And, and going up in, in, in you know, to, to the excited state, right? So this is this amplitude, you plug in what I have before, and this is what you get, right? Okay, and this is what you get. Uh, this here is the, it comes from the electromagnetic field, or the phi, or call it E, it doesn't matter, right? And uh, R is, is the geodesics, tau is, uh, is the proper time of the atom, right? So, and then, uh, and the T is is the is the, is the, the you know the curve uh, T rather uh, given by the Schwarzschild coordinates. So these R and T are the Schwarzschild coordinates, right? And and, and T of tau and R of tau are are the geodesics uh, for the trajectory of the of the atom in this uh, metric. Okay, all right. So we so so what you have to do to do this calculation. Uh, New new is the is the frequency defined by the uh, jump between the two states, right? In the two uh, in the two uh, state atom, and 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 you know you have to know exactly well, somehow you have to know the t of tau and r of tau, namely the geodesics, right? You if you do, then you plug them here and you do the calculation. Well, that's what they did, and in the Schwarzschild background, one can uh, exactly compute. Uh, these 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 these, these, these six equations exactly, especially if you you, you choose uh, you choose the infinity uh, at a, uh, you know far away at t equals minus infinity and and at rest and and when you do that you can uh, you solve the Schrodinger equation I mean the 
Glenn Gordon equation, the GeoCities equation, plug it into here. And you consider also the limit in which the frequency associated with the atom is much larger than, oh, all right, so this is good, than the mode, uh, the electromagnetic mode, by the way, let me go back a little bit, it's actually important for later. This is all, ah, okay, so this is the interaction, right? Uh, but they actually consider just, so they really consider in the interaction just one mode, okay? If you, if uh, this is, so this is the thing about the cavity. You can just pick out one single mode. So uh, the calculation has been done with one single mode. Uh, that is an approximation that, that is valid very often in, 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 this, in quantum optics. So, and, and that's what the setup is about the QED uh, cavity is all about partly, right? So, so they, they, they managed just to use one mode. We're going to later in the, in the most recent work, we did it for all modes and everything stays the same, but, but mathematically it was much more challenging. But so, so they're just doing this for one mode. And so in, in, in the approximation where nu is much larger than the frequency of that one mode. Uh, and uh, this is something again that they justify in, in, in terms of what they see in atomic physics. They say this, this is the typical situation in atomic physics. Uh, and, and if in the opposite situation, this becomes essentially zero. Right, you know, they, they have all that intuition. So the only known zero interesting case is this one. So therefore they do that. And when you do that and you do the calculation, this is what you get. Now this looks very, very interesting because you're starting to get this sort of Planckian factors, right? So, so this, is, this, is, this is like, uh, and when, when, when you do only radiation, you do something very similar, you get something uh, similar and you get the interpretation of a, of a over, over temperature. So, so now, you know, if you interpret this as a sort of thermal distribution, then there's a nice, then this becomes an e to the beta omega, right? And so that, that would, would seem to lead to a temperature at sort of thermal bath, right? right? So, so the atom seems to be, so the, 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 the um, observer very far away seems, it would, you know, this would seem to indicate that, that, that she's uh, detecting a, a thermal bath with this temperature. So that that's, and, 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 and this is a Planckian kind of thing, which is what you get in, in Hawking radiation. So that, that's very surprising, very, very surprising. That's something that the GR people, you know, thought, wow, that's, that's, that's strange. So, so anyway, but that's, that, that's what it was, right? So for, for, for okay, so then come uh, Horacio and I and, and, my, and MG, and, 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 and then started thinking, okay, this is, this is fascinating. You know, this is very unusual. So, but I came back home after talking to, to Marlon about these results and, and he said, you know what? I, I would like to look at this problem again from the perspective of, of near horizon, which Horacio and I had done for the uh, a tough calculation before. So, you know, I, how much of this depends on, on, on you know, what's your horizon is supposed to be the, the, you know, things are happening at the horizon in, in, in black hole uh, quantum effects, right? So, that, so, so they did not do that either. They did something very similar to, to a TOF. They just did that calculation, you know, from zero to infinity or minus infinity. They did not divide anything in near horizon or, or, or far away. So we, you know, figured let's let's do that and see see, you know, can we can we see something? Does this give any insights, right? So so kind of starting the whole program, but for in this particular setup. And and so we started, you know, with the, the same program. Uh, we're now going to do the the the, the their, 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 their analysis, but very close to the horizon. So we're, uh, we're going to study the radiation as the uh, atom gets very, very close to the horizon. So only during this interval, right, at the end. See what happens. Uh, our our uh, intuition uh, would tell us that should be most of, of, the, of, the, of the radiation, right? And, and, and see, you know, or maybe all, uh, like, like what happened with the TOF, right? Uh, the other question naturally came to mind was, can we generalize the result to other metrics? Can we use, uh, like a, before, generalized Schwarzschild? Uh, okay, can we do that? So we did, you know, okay, let's start like that again. Let's start this problem with an arbitrary Schwarzschild, generalized Schwarzschild metric, which includes Reitner's Nostrum and, and so forth. And uh, what about general initial conditions? They started at rest at infinity and they went just down and, and Ah, and zero angular momentum. 
uh, they went down all the way radially. Uh, well, we, we, you know, we generalize that. Let, let's see that, that this could be some other not, you know, finite distance and, and um, some initial energy, E, which, which includes also angular momentum, arbitrary. So we, we relax the, 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 their conditions and, and try to see how far we can go with our ideas. The intuition, again, is that in the end, when you get near horizon, all these things are irrelevant, right? But, I mean, so, well, then we did the calculation. We start doing the same thing. Scalar fields, of course, we know this from our previous work. We, when we get closer to the horizon, we get this, this type of uh, solution. And okay, so the first you know, three lines came out of our previous work, but now what happens to the geodesics equation? So uh, these are the solutions for the geodesics equations. Now in more general terms, because we, we have a, um, an arbitrary energy, an arbitrary, uh, you know, an, an initial condition, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, so it turns out that close to the to the horizon, these are the expressions for. I mean, you 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 can have the exact results, okay? But near the horizon, you make the expansions, and these are the expressions. And near the horizon, so for so tau becomes this, and t becomes that, right? And these are the things that you need to to get into the the formula for the probability, all right? And so with this. It turns out that, again, our calculations are much simpler than the, than the original ones. And this is gonna be absolutely crucial for, 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 the, you know, for the current uh, calculation, which I'm gonna tell you about. This is important, okay, right? But in any case, we did this, we did this, we get uh, the formula, and, and remember, we are, we're only considering the process very close to the horizon, but uh, this, this is, these are things that we get from the solution of the differential equation here. This this is the this this is the stuff that you get always with the, this exponential comes from the you know from the previous formula that I have for the probability. But this is the solution. This is comes from the E star, okay, which is the solution u near the horizon. We know this it has this form where, where these are all the parameters in the problem. So we want to study this. This doesn't look like what they have. Right? I mean, this is this is our result. How does this relate to their result? You know, what's well. Uh, if you th look at these things carefully, it, it's all here, right? So again, right, uh, this blue part is, is just, uh, so this has two types of functions here, the, the bluish and the pinkish. Uh, pinkish is, is again, the, the conformal solution, this, this guy here, right? And this is this exponential that comes from the definition. Uh, and and x, x of f is very, it's, it's essentially, essentially like an infinitesimal number, if you wish, right, okay? Let's, let's study this uh, more carefully because essentially what happens is, is that outside of this uh, small number, right, to the right of xf, the contribution of this is essentially going to be zero because of the oscillation of this guy. This guy oscillates very widely when nu is very large compared to omega, but we just, s is large in any case, it's large. And, uh, and let's see what happens, okay? This, so I have these two, the blue function and the pink function, all right? And, and here, the x-axis, so this is the function, these are the functions for imposed. And so, so I have the pink and I have the bluish. Uh, uh, this is, this is x, the x-axis, right? You see where you know, there's still decimals, but it's so very soon when, when you know, xf is very small, but you see like the oscillations. The oscillations of the blue uh, function, uh, so uh, and 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 the red function is you know it's fairly smooth, it gets smoother and smoother to to the right of x f, okay. So well, when you have this situation and you have the multiplication, uh, of course you have to go to real parts and all that. Uh, these integrals are, are are zero, right? Because you have one this 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 wild oscillation is 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 is, is you know this is the famous Riemann Le Lebesgue. Uh, theorem or whatever. So this integral, this, this integrates to zero. So, so a lot of it is, is zero to the right of x, f, x, 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 f, okay? Now let's, let's get closer to, to, to zero. Let's, let's, let's enhance this and you'll see now in the picture what happens. Uh, look, so the, the, the red one, okay, le, you know, let's see what happens to it. Uh, this is the, 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 this is the oscillation from conformal quantum mechanics. Uh, and the blue one, let's see what happens with it. Okay, let's see. So the red one, uh, 
keeps, and so the blue one becomes essentially one, right? Because essentially you see X here goes to zero. So this is gonna become essentially one, becomes very smooth, is not oscillating wildly anymore. The other one um, oscillates, and in fact, it, there's an infinite number of, it's the opposite. This guy is oscillates very, very widely, but, but it does it in a, in a in, look, it, it, it repeats itself. It repeats itself over and over and over. So it's not really wild in that sense, right? So uh, look. Look, at the, look at the blue one. You see, it starts repeating itself when you get closer and closer. This is a signal of conformal quantum invariance. This is, this is the, it starts repeating itself. This is a sort of conformality, all right? It's kind of self-similarity, et cetera, et cetera. Similar. So, 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 but then you see that when you get close to, to, to zero, you know, the, the product of these two guys, they, they, they don't kill each other. You know, you, you get some non-zero answers as you get closer. So the non-zero answers for these are coming from near the horizon. But in particular, that means that I can then extend this integral from zero to infinity, essentially, okay? I can do that. This is this is the, this is the summary of this. This is all in our papers too. So I'm going to take uh, now the upper limit to infinity because essentially that's that's you know I can do that, and now I can actually do this integral right because it's from zero to infinity, and lo and behold, when nu is greater than omega, we get exactly the same answer that uh, Scully et al. got, but now in, in more general terms, right. We get a Hawking temperature again, which is, you know, the, the well-known Hawking temperature for, for general. So K is the surface gravity. So I, I, I and and and, uh, and and so we have succeeded in, in obtaining their formula uh, uh, under more more general uh, conditions, right? Now, by the way, the limit here. So so we don't know anything about atomic physics, let's say, right? So we still use this limit to compare to what they had, but here this limit actually has a lot of Nice physical interpretation because this in this this is what you need to, to remember. This is the atomic uh, scale frequency, and this is the the the, uh, the electromagnetic scale, right? So uh, basically, basically the, you need this to 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 uh, so the atom is following in in a classical geodesic, yeah, classical. So this is the classicality of the geodesics. You know, this is much bigger than this. So so it's consistent with the fact that we we uh, our Atom is following the exact classical geodesic. So, from the GR point of view, this is a, this is this is, this is this is there. This is there. So, you know, it had, it, it has an equivalence in, in the language of, of atomic physics. But we don't even have to know atomic physics, it seems. But in any case, it's all consistent. We get this, the same result, but generalized. So, what have we gotten? So, what is the contribution of the event horizon in the acceleration radius? We just studied the radiation uh, very close to the horizon. Well, we got everything. We not we don't, didn't. It wasn't just dominant. We got everything. So it seems that their radiation is essentially coming right at the horizon upward, right? Okay. Uh, and conformal nature of the wave is extremely important in this, uh, in this this, this so-called thermal radiation. Uh, and the, we also were able to generalize this to to more general background metrics as we did before, and also more general boundary condition. Right? So. So you know we 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 were happy about it, and then we 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 went to so Abiji and I went to Texas A&M, and I told Abiji give a talk. That's what students are supposed to do, right? So, so he gave a talk, and uh, and uh, Marlon was very happy, especially when he saw the graph. He said that the graph is is worth one thousand words, and 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 then then he said, can you do it for Kurt? in a kind of sort of challenge way, okay? This, this is his old school, right? You know, this is the way that they would do things with the Schwinger and whatnot. And so he said, can you do it for Kirk? They were not, they want, they would have loved to do it for Kirk. Kirk metric is, is, is the black hole, the rotating black hole, right? And, and it's, it's, it's super important because black holes rotate. I mean, from, from the phenomenological point of view, they're super important, but, but also theoretically, then that's really... All right, so so they they were not able to do it, uh, and no wonder because the black hole metric, right, is much more complicated. This rotation causes headaches. Uh, I mean, for instance, there is there is now uh, dt and d phi cross terms and things like that. So so you know uh, there's a bunch of factors, 
And uh, the, the geodesics equations are much more complicated, coupled, and, uh, and, and there's all kinds of parameters. I mean, uh, to, to the best of our knowledge, uh, there isn't an exact solution, maybe, maybe in some Russian book or something, but uh, you know, we, we, and that's, that stopped them from to, to, to even try. Well, so, well, but again, uh, the intuition that we had was that when, when you, and, and you know, I've done several of these calculations, including fermion problems, when you go to the inner horizon, everything simplifies. And, and you can do that. It's not trivial still, but I say, okay, so I told my student, this, and, and we found some interesting references that, that, that help. But in any case, yeah, we managed to do it again. In this case, it was, you know, this is the second paper in the series. And we get a, 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 essentially the same formulas that uh, uh, Marlon had, right? But now you have to, instead of omega, uh, for that mode, you have to use the shift because of the angular momentum contribution. That that's also standard in, in this business. So we have reproduced uh, Scully's uh, results. So it's very robust. So so it wasn't an accident, right? So we we're we're basically making his his intuition, you know, his results very robust. But but giving this extra extra uh, 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 ingredients of conformality and symmetry, which we are thinking about currently, right? Trying to see how we can interpret this whole thing in terms of symmetries and how it is maybe related to uh, other, um, you know, other approaches, string theory, other types of conformal uh, treatments. So, so we're, you know, constantly thinking about that, but, but in any case, you know, we, 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 we have uh, vindicated Marlon's uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> insights, right? So again, we got the same result. Now we actually published this paper together because I, uh, you know, we came well. Well, this is and we we started working and blah blah blah. So uh, so so that actually together this collaboration and then this collaboration kept going. So the last thing I have, how much time do I have? So it's eleven now in our time. So I don't know, ten minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, so it, what I described before. Uh, so, you know, you see a kind of therm thermality, right? It, 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 it looks thermal, right? But again, as I said, if you just compute one, you know, the, the radiation from one, that's, that's really not thermal, but, but it's starting to look thermal, right? So you have to be, uh, there. first of all, you, you have to also co compute the, the absorption, right? So now you have two processes, emission and absorption, and, 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 and then put a lot of them, a lot of these atoms producing uh, many, many, many photons, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to do a really like many body problem, uh, you know, and, 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 and this is where the, the expertise in quantum uh, physics and quantum uh, uh, optics uh, was ex extremely important. So, uh, so, so Marlon, of course, even in their paper, right? They, they knew that. So what they did was uh, they, they posed the whole problem in terms of the master equation, uh, so, so they injected now in the cavity, they injected many, many uh, atoms and there were many atoms radiating. So, so in the end, you had, uh, you had produced, a, you know, this is, you had the two clouds, so to speak. You have like a gas of, of photons uh, going off to infinity, right, and, or something, and in some state, right, some state. And then you have the cl a cloud of atoms themselves. So the atoms are falling into the black hole, right? But they, before they fall into nothingness or whatever, the, another universe or something, eh, they are radiating upward, right? So, and, and so that's, that's, that's the point. But now, now you can actually pose the question of, of, of you know, the thermodynamics of this and, and the equilibrium, uh, you know, the onset of equilibrium. And so they did that, right? So they, they have the master equation eh, for the, for the uh, now, now you have the, the you know, the, the photon and the, uh, the photon and the atom system, right? You have both, so so these two, these two systems, but they did the following, right? So they, uh, so so they paid attention because what you're going to observe at infinity is not the atoms, but right? the atoms are going to be gone. So so he he only then he then uh, out of the uh, density matrix for the the system of these these this two these two uh, components, he traced out the atom part, right? To just look at the a row matrix for the for the photons, and then he, then he posed the uh, the master equation, and, and you know there's 
the, the standard solutions, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So, so that was very important. He, he did that. I've uh, seek he, he sought uh, for steady solutions. And when you know when you do that, and he done all of that. He done all of that in, in, in his, his laser stuff, right? So when you do that, you find a steady solution, which is indeed thermal, right? That's just thermal. And, and at some temperature, T, this is sort of the general thing. Now, the, in his, he, he's going to use these ideas for his, he did for this black hole problem uh, in which the, there was a temperature already, the Hawking temperature, right? So it's not just any temperature. There was a temperature, the Hawking temperature, which for us, right, for us, it came manda mandated by uh, what happened in the, in the uh, horizon, around the horizon. Right? So, so, so this is what you know, he, he hadn't done. So, so we, we, the, the, our input is a CQM and field modes. When you get you know, close to the horizon, it implies the Hawking temperature, which is the input now to the right-hand side. Uh, and, then, and then you can find the, you find indeed a thermal, you know, Planckian distribution at this temperature. Okay, so, so, you know, it's, it's a real thermal state. But, it, well, okay, I'm going kind of fast. It is real, it's thermal, but there's a but here. So only if, so, so and this is where, you know, this is this mastery here. It, it depends on the injection process. So, yes, so you produce these, these sort of gas of photons, you know, going off to infinity. And the and the cloud of of, of of the cloud of atoms, but in order to find thermality, and, and this is from the equations, right? You have to inject inject them in a random fashion. So the, so you know it's, it's one after the other, one after the other. But when they get in, it, that's done in a in a random fashion, completely random fashion. There's just no you know. So so if you wish, so this process of injection you know takes some time, capital T. Right between zero and t, right, and then you put all this this cloud. But you know, you, you don't you don't you don't do it in a regular fashion. You 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 throw them in, you inject them in in a sort of random time fashion. So so you choose some randomness, and with that, then he was able to define a sort of coarse graining, a sort of time averaging process procedure here. This is all exactly what he'd done in the, what they do in, in in quantum optics and. And lasers and all that. So, so you know, this all and and it was foreign to me. It's foreign to a lot of people. So you know, so some subtleties there. But in any case, he used exactly those ideas, and 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 because if it's not done in, in that fashion, you don't get thermality. So so if you don't do that. The states at infinity are actually pure states. You know, that's and things like that. So, but but if you do them in this fashion experimentally, then then and so he done all of that. Then you get thermality. Okay, so so here we you know we assume that uh, and uh, and then so 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 we did that and uh, the other thing that we did was uh, so so we of course did it in you know he didn't he didn't do it for Kurt he did everything to begin with for Schwarzschild now we did we did it for Kurt so we did the calculation that I just showed you before for Kurt but we also did the master equation analysis that he did for Kurt which he hadn't done right. Uh, so now you have angular momentum and so forth, uh, and we, we we still recover his his result. The, the fact that uh, uh, that and, and it's technically uh, that, that the, the the master equation is it gets very complicated. There's all kinds of off diagonal terms and so forth. But the magic of the uh, of these uh, random um, injection it, it diagonalizes everything. It's really beautiful. But but you know he, he basically took that from his sort of flat space-time intuition and just, he's used it for, for this case and he was correct. So we, we actually did it carefully with, with Kerr, right? Because we want to uh, get closer to the dynamics. And we did that and then, uh, and, and it was very subtle. I mean, it's kind of complicated and that's why the papers became large, but it's all there. And many, but it's right. So his intuition is brilliant, right? So we confirmed this, that case. And the most interesting part in the end though, so, so the thermality, uh, the steady solution, the thermality of the uh, the, char the thermal character of the radiation at infinity, you know that's all you know, checked and and it's fine. But the and, and that's already pretty neat, pretty nice, right? So, so you're getting sort of uh, you know Hawking radiation like things you know, at infinity from this process uh, by virtue of of the injection procedure. But the the other thing that he did was he he did this small perturbation analysis about the steady solution. Right, in, in, you know, 
so uh, you know, so he, he considered the time variation of the of the of the matrix of, of the of the density matrix also he did that and 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 and, and but he, what he did was he okay so having that then you can compute the he introduced the von Neumann entropy for this gas the photon gas all right and he computed the rate at which uh, at which uh, uh, the this entropy is changing and he he done again he done all of this and he found this at the bottom okay he found that the rate and p means photons the photons whatever it's proportional to the temperature and this is the energy of the photons or the mass right you know whatever mass if it's massive so uh, so uh, the uh, i mean whatever you know energy it is the energy whatever the square root of you know m squared plus a whatever this is he found that uh, that the uh, time uh, derivative of the entropy uh, is proportional to the to the time derivative of the energy and with and with beta being the proportionality constant of course our beta beta will be this guy eventually uh, but this is this to the right hand side he done all of that for you know, quantum optics and so when he put it together here it, he got uh, okay and I'm, I'm just basically saying what kind of this is what you know just this I just this is this is sort of the the essence of the of the analysis. Oh, by the way, we ah another thing that we did. We also did it for all the modes, for all the modes, not just one mode. All right. We so our calculation. This is the two papers. It was done for all the modes, doing all the summations and frequency, momentum, space, all the quantum numbers. That of course was somewhat complicated, but it all works out. It all works out. That's in the papers. Okay. There we go. Da -da. It's uh, so you know we verify the thermality, and this is the key thing, right? So that in the end, in the end, you can find and and you know I don't have time to to, to describe it. A, a that the time variation of the when you put together now the black hole stuff plus so this formula at the top here for the but time derivative of the von Neumann entropy for the for the photon gas uh, is is this this is this comes this is still uh, this is still uh, quantum optics right you know the laser physics but and this is also still laser physics this, this is the ratio of the rates of absorption and emission this is a standard condition for equilibrium this is where you get the temperature right all of this but but then you put the black hole stuff or, or beta is Hawking beta etc cetera, etc. Cetera, and you get this nice, and you, you start putting the area, et cetera, et cetera. And you get a sort of, uh, let's see. Okay, and you, you get this, you start getting the, remember that the Hawking, so anyway, so let's keep going. So we get this, and then when beta is the Hawking temperature, we get this at the bottom. He, he, he did, he did it, and we did, of course, too. Now, now he did it again only with Schwarzschild. Uh, we did it, including uh, with Kerr, which which is a, so so the the mapping with so there's a mapping that we established in the papers between the von Neumann entropy uh, and the thermodynamics of black holes. This is this exact correspondence. Uh, so we the, with that and some analysis of conservation of energy and angular momentum, we are led to this, right? So so you know he he hadn't quite done that, he, uh, but he was sort of. His intuition went directly to this, uh, but but it's still correct. Everything is correct, and we get the exact one fourth. This is not Hawking's result yet, right? I mean, but it it it's, it looks very close. So so now you have a radiation at infinity, for which this equation at the bottom is ah uh, and, and, and a so a p is the the variation of the area, right? So so you have here. Uh, so you have this this gas that's being emitted and it's interacting with the with the uh, with the of course with the with the with the cloud of of of, of atoms which is entering into, into the black hole. So you really have three things here. You have you have the gas of photons, you have the cloud of atoms, and you have the black hole, right? And those things are actually there's an interplay between between the three actors, right? So 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 then of course as a consequence of all this. The area is changing. All right? The area is changing. Now, of course, if if all that's happening is that the atoms are falling into the black hole, then the area would have to be expanded. Right? 
and that binds the mass of the eye of the but it's not this is this interplay so it's a very subtle kind of thing and so the the area the change in the area has two components one due to the atoms entering and one due to this sort of indirect interaction to with the gas right so it has two components and that's what we call here ap dot but uh, but this is this is uh, this is a beautiful result right it's not quite hockey but but it's 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 very suggestive so uh you know this i wanted just to show you this is in the last basically he done it already you know on, on his own but he, he, we did it for he did it only with one mode uh, well he okay no he started with one mode but then he went to to all uh, to more to more modes but it, but we have we we have it for kurt we we, we do everything i mean i we hope it's kosher but it was published anyway Okay, so 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 you know, I, and this is this is. I hope that, that I have raised your interest enough that you are going to go to these two papers and read them in detail. But uh, okay, so this is a summary. So we we saw that uh, the excitation probability is coming from the horizon, you know, uh, and the conformal nature of the integrand was fundamental for all of this, and. Uh, we were able to extend uh, this formulation to more general metrics and initial conditions. And then in the end, there was, uh, uh, you know, the, the thermal aspects that were dealt with, uh, you know, trying to, to find this interesting. Oh, by the way, the name. This entropy, S, okay, this is what he, he Scully and company called H-bar entropy. H-bar entropy. It's horizon brightened acceleration radiation. <laughs> so this SP is is h bar entropy is the entropy of the gas right but it's it's uh, it's horizon brightened you know i actually acceleration radiation it, it's it's really it's, it's interesting because in the way he named these it, it's basically what we are saying <laughs> the horizon is brightened in this but but in any case that's that's what it is okay and uh Finally, so that's what you get the, the H bar entropy, and it's looking very close to to Hawking. Uh, we are, uh, you know, future work with this, including the deeper connection between this symmetric symmetry aspects of this, and 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 you know, I I like to think of this as some sort of a Gedanken, uh, um, where you can probe when you can probe uh, uh, radiation of black holes. Okay, in, in some in it's it, it's a different kind of thing. I, I, I think that if I don't know, but if if Marlin has done had done this analysis in 1975, this might have been called uh, scholarly radiation or something. I mean, I, I think, but but you know, I, I it, 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 there is a, an intimate relationship between this and Hawking radiation. So I think this setup is, is is promising to investigate what happens in in more general cases like that currently. Uh, there's this, a lot of uh, you know studies with causal diamonds, et cetera. So you know we plan to do uh, some of these things in the future. This is uh, all the agencies that uh, supported the work of all of us, and uh, and, and that's it. And thank you very much. Oops. Thanks, anyway. Carlos, for the interesting talk. So I will invite people to unmute the microphone so that we can thank Carlos. You're welcome. Uh, uh, should I should I uh, should I uh, stop sharing now, or should I? Well, I it? don't know. Let's see if there are ah, questions, okay. and, uh, okay. and uh, if you need the slides to for the Perfect. questions. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Yes, so please. the section is now open for questions. Ron, please. Oh. Well, Carlos, thanks for uh, a fascinating talk. Uh, of course, I'm not an expert in this area, but I can see that there are a lot of very interesting connections being made between uh, black hole thermodynamics and right. quantum mechanics, quantum optics. Exactly. And, uh, stochastic processes. Absolutely. Uh, I have one question, which may be way off the uh, mark, but uh, is there any connection between uh, this finding of, of a temperature that characterizes this quantum process Mm -hmm. And the so-called eigenstate thermalization hmm. hypothesis. Uh, I've heard the words, uh, but I'm not so so familiar. Uh, can you remind? Can you 
Yeah, yeah I, I can I guess, try to, to okay. summarize this. I may be, I may be uh, mangling it a bit, but mm -hmm. it's an idea that goes back to von Neumann, but that was really, I think, highlighted after uh, Deutsch published uh, an article on this in the mm -hmm. 90s, I think, and since then it's been widely discussed. Uh, the idea is that if you have uh, an eigenstate for uh, a quantum system, uh, a many body quantum system, uh, that's non integrable. That's an important point. Mm -hmm. uh, then, generically, uh, the uh, probability distribution of an observable uh, that, that has to do with some small fraction of the, uh, of the system, generically, the uh, how to put it, the, the probability density or, or the reduced, uh, the partial um, right. density reduced trace. Has, has a uh, thermal form, has, has a uh, temperature associated with it. It's, oh. it's like a uh, microcanonical or, or canonical distribution. Right. That's, that's okay, more that's or less, I think. I've okay, interesting. I, I definitely want to talk. Sites, no, no. I, 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 you know, that's very interesting. I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I definitely want to talk to you further about that. Having said that, I mean, I, I don't know the specifics of the eigenstates, things, but what you're saying, actually, you know, when you have these two systems uh, and you, uh, redu you, 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 you work in terms of the reduce. Uh, density matrix, right? Uh, uh, what what is what is fairly? I, mean, I just I just taught a course in, Q, in quantum computing up just to learn the subject, and, and and this is very well known. If if you have you know the A and B, right, and and, and the big system, and, and and let's say you start with the pure state, right, in the in the in the in the big system. Uh, and so the so the density matrix is just you know the pure state you know bracket thing right so but and, but if you go to any of the subsystems right if you trace out that you know one of the the, the two then you get a, a a density a mixed state right when you are when you are working in the, in one of the, the subsystems right now that mixed state right I mean it may or may not be thermal right so that's 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 the key. So there are conditions, right? There are conditions, and and this is something that's being used a lot now, right? Like for instance, uh, and and you know, Ted Ted is an expert on this thing. But so uh, the Unruh effect, right? If you, uh, it, so you can you can visualize, you can do calculations, you can do, you know, like Unruh did to begin with, and all that. But but one way to look at it is is uh, if you. Uh, you can look at, so, so there's these, these wedges, right? The right wedge and the left wedge where the uh, accelerated observers can live in, in the Unruh effect. So uh, the Hilbert space then can be divided into, into the product of, of a left and a right uh, sector, right? And so if you take, I'm, I'm just summarizing this. If you take a pure state, so Minkowski, the Minkowski vacuum, which is a pure state and, you know, does, doesn't, uh, you know, it has not, it has no particles or whatnot. It can be expressed uh, in terms of, of, of these, these left and right uh, states, which are basically the, the so-called Rindler states, right? Okay. And, uh, and uh, so, so it's, it's, it's a called thermal field expansion. So, 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 you, so a pure state can be uh, decomposed into, into tensor products of this thermal uh, the, 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 these Rindler uh, vectors, and then when you compute the the uh, tra the, the row matrix for for the vacuum, right? You said you know vacuum, you know you said the, uh, what is it, cat bra, uh, yeah, the, you know just just, just, just the, for the fewer state. If, if, then you take that ex the expansion that I told you in words, and then you take the trace of or the left or the right, right? To get then you you get explicitly a thermal. Uh, a thermal distribution, uh, okay, with a temperature. So, so that's a, but that happens in some cases, right? And that's something I'm thinking about. And I, I, I think the super duper experts, you know, the, 
they, they, you know, Ted Jacobsons of the world, and that may be trivial for them, but uh, uh, you can imagine doing something like this in general, where, where you have the original Hilbert space is the product of two Hilbert spaces, and then you, you trace out one and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So under what conditions can you interpret that as a thermal distribution? You know, that's a, that's a general thing, but it sounds like, but I haven't heard about this eigenstates business. So I, I, I would like to. Yeah, I can send you some uh, references. Please do. I, I, you know, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's, that, I, that's what I'm trying to find because I, I you know, we, and, and I think this is probably it, it's, it, it, your sense too, right? You don't get these results for nothing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he has the incredibly brilliant intuition that of, of the, of the physics of this, and, and he transported the physics of lasers into this, and and physics is physics, right? So you know, so a Feynman or whatever, uh, but but uh, you, you you don't get you know hawking like things for nothing, right? I mean, so there there's some sort of structure underlying structure which I'm trying to 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 look for, and I think it's something like what you're saying could be could be this. So I tell my students, you, you, I I think we have this is like a kind of convoluted way of saying something somewhat simple if we understood the underlying you know structure right gr and, and so forth so so yes i i i think there is such a thing and so i, I would be very interested in i mean, you know may, maybe not right but but right. but i would like to find so yes i would definitely like to know more about that yeah. very interesting comment and question i i don't know the answer to that but i think <laughs> the, the, the question is interesting yeah. thanks thank you and and you know i'm sorry sorry no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is this is you know, I mean, for the students, I I, I try to present. If if the last ten minutes you, you were kind of lost, uh, don't worry about it because I mean, I, it was too condensed. But I hope that that the first part of it, that the most of it, was to convey, you know, how this works and and the basic principles. Uh, you will have the the talk recorded, so you can go back and the papers. Yeah, I like I like to write pedagogical papers in myself. So if students have I have, there are some ideas. Maybe some of you would like to do something. If, for instance, if you look at the paper, the, 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 the recent papers about this, this, this Bekenstein kind of uh, analysis, we haven't proven Bekenstein yet because uh, we, we, we had that, that formula that I have here for the, gas, for the gas piece, we definitely proved that, but we don't have a similar formula for, so there is no Bekenstein law for the atoms. <laughs> the atom piece right that, that i mean if we don't have that right we 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 know that for the black hole and and now we know that for the piece of the of the of the gas that's emitted but the the, the cloud what happens to the cloud we you know it's, it's sort of it seems to be like model dependent right so it will be interesting to to try to do some calculation of entropies and all that so there there might be some interesting things maybe not for a phd thesis but maybe for a master's thesis okay so feel free to reach out to me after that Yes, thanks. Okay, thanks. Are there other questions, comments? So if not, we thank Carlos again. Thanks a lot for, for the talk. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, you know, I really uh, enjoyed exposing about this. Uh, I, uh, I try to 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 give you a little bit of intuition. I think that's the key thing. But but there's a lot of technical aspects that uh, I mean, and you know, the students, right? I, I, when I run, probably does the same. I mean, I when I teach a class, um, I I don't I don't you know I, I show them who I am uh, it's because scientists are not perfect. The world is not a book that's written from A to B and C. Uh, we, I don't always understand everything, and uh, I get confused. Uh, so I, you know, that's okay. So uh, it's it's part of being a scientist too. And so uh, you know, these things are complicated. Uh, you know, the, the growth of these things is non-linear in time. It's a causal. <laughs> you go back and forth. I'm still understanding things better than 30, 40 years ago. Oh, that's that's what this meant. You know, so. Uh, you don't don't feel frustrated if if, if that happens to you, and, um, and, and that's how science is done. I mean, I call right now, for instance, <laughs> I just had my student gave his first PhD presentation yesterday. He's he's from Ecuador, by the way, and uh, I call it theoretical uh, experimental physics. You, 
like like Philip, Philip Candelas, who was actually by my advice, he used to say, just do it. Just do it. I mean, sometimes you, you have to kind of just do it, you know, and <laughs> see what happens and go back. That, that's not the linear, nice, sort of elegant way to, to proceed, right? So, so you know, I, I, I don't claim that I understand everything of this. Even there, there are some aspects of quantum laser physics that I want to understand. This business of the injection is very subtle. Ron, you probably, I'm sure you understand that better than I do. I mean, there, there's some stochastic stuff going on and whatnot. So, so, but, but you know, that's the way physics is done. You know, you don't, you don't have to understand everything all the time. At all. That doesn't mean that you don't understand anything all the time either. Okay, don't, don't, don't go to the other end. But, but, uh, but uh, you shouldn't wait to be a, a master of, of everything there is out there before you try to, you know, get into something. I'm sure that Ron probably has, that, and, and my colleague here also. Anyway, so right. thank you again. Thank you again for, for the opportunity. And, and I hope that when things are better, maybe I can come down there, okay, to spend yeah. some time or something. Yeah. And, and, and I would love to have some people visit over here as well. Yeah. So. Okay, great. Great. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much.